Hello friends, I am Dr. Ajay Prasad. I will be presenting to you firewalls in this video session. Friends, you might have come across this word many times. If you have used personal computers or have been working in an organization where internal network of computers is maintained. Firewalls are a first line of defense in your network as well as in your systems. It protects your systems from unwanted intrusions. Let us look at the major takeaways from this session. After going through this video, you will be able to understand what are firewalls, recognize the need for firewalls in computing, know the basic working of firewalls, recognize various types of firewalls and categories of firewalls, configure and use various operating system firewalls. Contents that will be covered in this session are, firstly, we will try understand the definition of firewalls. Secondly, we will understand what is the need of our firewalls. After that, we will try previewal idea about how a firewall works, that is firewall working. Later, we will see various firewall categories and types of firewalls. In the last, we will learn few initial steps of configuring firewall in your computer or operating system. For example, in Windows, Linux and Mac systems. A firewall is a network security system designed to prevent unauthorized access to or from a private network. A firewall is a system that provides network security by filtering incoming and outgoing network traffic based on set of user defined rules. In general, the purpose of a firewall is to reduce or eliminate the occurrence of unwanted network communications while allowing all legitimate communications to flow freely. Firewalls can be implemented as both hardware and software or a combination of both. Network firewalls are frequently used to prevent unauthorized internet users from accessing private networks connected to the internet, especially intranets. All messages entering or leaving the intranet pass through the firewall, which examines each message and blocks those that do not meet the specific security criteria. Let's see what are the needs that make us have a firewall or why do we actually need firewalls. Firstly, let's explore the needs in the context of businesses and large corporations. Large corporations often have very complex firewalls in place to protect their extensive networks. On the outbound side, firewalls can be configured to prevent employees from sending certain types of emails or transmitting sensitive data outside of the network. On the inbound side, firewalls can be programmed to prevent access to certain websites like social networking sites, etc. Additionally, Firewalls can prevent outside computers from accessing computers inside the network. A company might choose to designate a single computer on the network for file sharing and all other computers can be restricted. There is no limit to the variety of configurations that are possible when using firewalls. Extensive configurations typically need to be handled and maintained by highly trained IT specialists. Let us now appreciate the need of firewalls for personal use. That is, as a personal computer user or your home networks like your home Wi-Fi. For home use, firewalls work much more simply. The main goal of a personal firewall is to protect your personal computer and private network from malicious mischief. Malware, malicious software is the primary threat to your home computer. Viruses are often the first type of malware that comes to mind. A virus can be transmitted to your computer through email or over the internet and can quickly cause a lot of damage to your files. Other malware includes Trojan horse programs and spywares. These malicious programs are usually designed to acquire your personal information for the purpose of identity theft of some kind. There are two ways a firewall can prevent this from happening. 
it can allow all traffic to pass through except data that meets a predetermined set of criteria or it can prohibit all traffic unless it meets a predetermined set of criteria. Friends, now let us have an overview of actually how a firewall works. The firewall scenarios can be many, but basically we will try understanding it in the context of home networks and office networks. We will basically know where actually we place our firewalls in these contexts. A home network connects your computers and devices like printers, copiers, scanners, faxes, TVs, media and audio systems in your house so that you can share those devices, share your files including music, pictures, movies which enables then that multiple people can surf the internet and access other elements on the network at the same time. Wireless networking is perfect when you want to connect devices in locations where it would be difficult or expensive to run Ethernet cables. However, wired connection is always preferable to wireless when possible for security reasons as well as speed of connection. The amount of data that can be transferred and the security of the connection are all superior with a wired connection. If you have any type of broadband internet like DSL, cable, fiber optic etc. Most likely the ISP that is the internet service provider which is the company you pay the bill to will have supplied you with at least a modem. The modem can be of form of a broadband connection modem for Wi-Fi, USB modems etc. Almost all smartphones now have a feature of modem called as tethering. Some modems generally additionally may function as a router. Here is where we place our firewall in home networks that is in the modem or router. An office network means use of switches and routers. Switches connect multiple devices, computers, printers, servers, etc. on the same network within a building or a campus. Routers tie multiple networks together. When building a small office network, you will need one or more routers. A router connects your network computers to the internet. This enables all connected computers to share one single internet connection. It is here that we place our firewall. Let us now know and understand various categories in which firewalls can be characterized. Two main categories of firewalls are network or host based firewalls and hardware or software based firewalls. Network based firewalls are positioned on the gateway computers of local area network LAN, wide area network WAN and intranets. Intranets are local form of internet present over an organizational network. Here the network based firewalls are either software appliances running on general purpose hardware or hardware based firewall computer appliances. Firewall appliances may also offer other functionality to the internal network they protect such as acting as a dynamic host configuration protocol DHCP or virtual private network VPN server for that network. For example, a network based firewall will mainly reside on your LAN server or your proxy server. Host based firewalls are positioned on the network node itself and control network traffic in and out of those machines. The host based firewall may be a daemon or a service as a part of the operating system or an agent application such as endpoint security or protection. Each has advantages and disadvantages. However, each has a low role layered in security. Hardware firewalls can be purchased as a standalone product, but more recently, hardware firewalls are typically found in broadband routers and should be considered as an important part of our system and network setup, especially for anyone on a broadband connection. Hardware firewalls can be effective with little or no configuration and they can protect every machine on a local network. Most hardware firewalls 
will have a minimum of four network ports to connect other computers. But for larger networks or business networking firewall solutions are available. A hardware firewall uses packet filtering to examine the header of a packet to determine its source and destination. This information is compared to a set of predetermined or user created rules that determine whether the packet is to be forwarded or dropped. As with any electronic equipment, a computer user with general computer knowledge can plug in a firewall, adjust a few settings and have it to work. To ensure that your firewall is configured for optimal security and protect however, consumers will no doubt need to learn the specific features of their hardware firewall. However, how to enable them and how to test the firewall to do to ensure it's doing a good job of protecting your network. Not all firewalls are created equally and to this end it is important to read the manual and documentation that comes with your product. Additionally, the manufacturer's web site will usually provide a knowledge base or FAQ to help you get started. If the terminology is a bit too tech oriented, you can also use the Webopedia search to help you get a better understanding of some of the tech and computer terms you will encounter while setting up your hardware firewall. To test your hardware firewall security, you can purchase third party software or search the internet for a free online based firewall testing service. Firewall testing is an important part of maintenance to ensure your system is always configured for optimal protection. Software firewalls. For individual home users, the most popular firewall choice is a software firewall. Software firewalls are installed on your computer like any software and you can customize it, allowing you some control over its function and protection features. A software firewall will protect your computer from outside attempts to control or gain access to your computer and depending on your choice of software firewall, it could also provide protection against most common Trojan programs or email worms. Many software firewalls have user defined controls for setting up safe file and printing share and block unsafe applications from running on your system. Additionally, software firewalls may also incorporate privacy controls, web filtering and more. The downsize to software firewalls is that they will only protect the computer they are installed on not a network so each computer will need to have a software firewall installed on it like hardware firewalls there is a vast number of software firewalls to choose from we get started you may wish to read reviews of software firewalls and search out the product website to glean some information first a good software firewall will run in the background on your system and use only a small amount of system resources it is important to monitor a software firewall once installed and to download any updates available from the de developer from time to time. The differences between a software and hardware firewall are vast and the best protection for your computer and network is to use both as each other's different but much needed security features and benefits are there with them. Updating your firewall and your operating system is essential to maintaining optimal protection as is testing your firewall to ensure it is connected and working correctly. Firewalls also vary in type depending on where communication originates, where it is intercepted and the state of communication being traced. Friends, let us now learn what are the basic types of firewall based on their working. Basic types of firewalls are packet filtering firewalls, circuit level gateways, stateful ins inspection firewalls, application level gateways, next gen firewalls. Packet filter. Friends, you know that data moves in network in form of data packets. The packet filter firewalls looks at each packet entering or leaving the network and accepts or rejects it based on user defined rules. Packet filtering is fairly effective and transparent to users, but it is difficult to configure. In addition, it is susceptible to IP snoofing. You may be knowing that in computer networking, IP address spoofing or IP spoofing 
is the creation of internet protocol packets which with a false source IP address for the purpose of impersonating another computer system. Circuit level gateways apply security mechanisms when a TCP or UDP connection is established. Once the connection has been made, packets can flow between the host without further checking. TCP and UDP protocols are basic protocols for establishing connection and communication. A stateful firewall keeps track of the state of the network connections such as TCP streams or UDP con communication and is able to hold significant attributes of each connection in memory. These attributes are collectively known as the state of the connection and may include such details as IP addresses and ports involved in the connection and the sequence numbers of the packets traversing the connection. A stateful inspection monitors incoming and outgoing packets over time as well as state of the connection and stores the data in dynamic state tables. This cumulative data is evaluated so that filtering decisions would not only be based on administer defined rules but also on context that has been built by previous connections as well as previous packets belonging to the same connection. By keeping track of the connection state, stateful firewalls provide added efficiency in terms of packet inspection. This is because for existing connections, the firewall needs only check the state table instead of checking the packet against the firewall's rule set, which can be extensive. Additionally, in the case of a match with the state table, the firewalls does not need to perform deep packet inspection. In computing, a stateful firewall is a network firewall that tracks the operating state and characteristics of the network connections traversing it. The firewall is configured to distinguish legitimate packets for different types of connections. The main difference between the packet filtering and the stateful inspection firewalls is that Stateful, stateful inspection systems maintain a state table allowing them to keep track of all open connections through a firewall, while packet filtering firewalls do not. Stateless firewalls watch network traffic and restrict or block packets based on source and destination addresses or other static values. They are not aware of the traffic patterns or data flows. A stateless firewall filter also known as an access control list ACL never does stateful inspection of the traffic. Proxy server. Proxy servers intercepts all messages entering and leaving the network. The proxy server effectively hides the true network addresses. In practice, many firewalls use two or more of these techniques in collaborative manner. It should be noted that a firewall is considered a first line of defense in protecting private information for greater security. For greater security, data needs to be encrypted. Firewalls called a next generation firewall NGFW work by filtering network and internet traffic based upon the applications or traffic types using specific ports. Next generation firewalls blend the features of a standard firewall with quality of service functionalities in order to provide smart and deeper inspection. Next generation firewalls perform deeper inspection compared to stateful inspection performed by the first and second generation firewalls. Next generation firewalls use a more thorough inspection style, checking packet loads and matching signatures for harmful activities such as exploitable attacks and malware. It provides improved detection of encrypted applications and intrusion prevention service. Modern threats like web-based malware attacks, targeted attacks, application layer attacks and more have had a significantly negative effect on threat landscape. In fact, more than 80% of a new all new malware and intrusion attempts are exploiting weaknesses in applications as opposed to weaknesses in network components and services. Let us now learn how to configure and use firewalls in your native system. Mostly we use computers having operating systems like Mac, Windows or Linux.
Herefore, we will try having an idea about the firewall services in all these so that one can at least locate them and set them for basic needs. Let's start with MAC systems. Every MAC ships with a built-in firewall, a service that can be configured to disallow information from entering your MAC. Here's how to turn on and configure your MAC built-in firewall. In your MAC systems, first from the Apple menu, select System Preferences, the window shown appears, then select Security and Privacy. Then click the Firewall tab, click the lock icon and authenticate with your administrator username and password. The window shown below appears. Click Start. The firewall turns on. You will now know it's enabled when you see the green light and the firewall on message as shown below. Then click Advanced. The window shown appears. Then select the automatically allow SIG signed software to receive incoming connections checkbox. This allows the application on your Mac to communicate with the outside world. Then select the enable stealth mode checkbox. This prevents your Mac from responding to port scans and ping requests. Then click OK to close the advanced settings. Then close the system preferences. Your Mac is now protected by the built-in firewall. Let's now look into Windows Firewall. Windows Firewall, officially called Windows Defender Firewall in Windows 10, is a firewall component of Microsoft Windows. It was first included in Windows XP and Windows Server 2003. Prior to the release of Windows XP Service Pack 2 in 2004, it was known as Internet Connection Firewall. With the release of Windows 10 in September 2017, it was renamed Windows Defender Firewall as part of the Windows Defender branding campaign. With firewall in Windows 7 or 10, we can configure inbound and outbound rules. By default, all outbound traffic is allowed and inbound responses to that traffic are also allowed. Inbound traffic initiated from external sources is automatically blocked. Sometimes we will see a notification about a blocked program which is trying to access network resources. In that case, we will be able to add an exception to our firewall in order to allow traffic from the program in the future. Windows 7 comes with new features. When it comes to firewall, for example, full stealth feature blocks other computers from performing operating system fingerprinting. OS frame fingerprinting is a malicious technique used to determine the operating system running on the host machine. Another feature is boot time filtering. This feature ensures that the firewall is working at the same time when the network interface becomes active, which was not the case in previous versions of Windows. To find out whether Windows firewall is running, open the control panel by clicking start and then clicking control panel. In the search box, type firewall and then select the Windows firewall applet. The Windows firewall window will open. In this case, you need to configure the firewall to allow test left network activities. To turn on your Windows Defender Firewall, go to Start and open Control Panel, then open System and Security, then open Windows Defender Firewall, choose Customize Settings, turn Windows Firewall on or off for domain private and public networks. In Windows 7, different network profiles can be configured on your different interfaces. For example, our wired interface can have different profiles than our wireless interface. There are three different networks profiles available, public, home or work, also known as private network and domain which is used within a domain. We choose those locations when we connect to a network. We can always change the location in the network and sharing center in control panel. The domain profile can be automatically assigned by the NLA service when we log on to an Active Directory domain. Note that we must have administrative rights 
in order to configure firewalls in Windows 7. On the right hand side, it splits the view into private networks and guest or public networks. Your home wireless network should show up under private networks, but if it doesn't, then you will probably have to manually tell that the network is a home network and not a public network. If it has a green check mark next to it, it means that the Windows firewall is running and controlling data transfers. Please note that a firewall will not protect you from viruses and other malware. You want, if you want to truly protect your computer from potential threats, it is suggested having both a firewall and antivirus program installed on your computer. Or at least, at a minimum, it is recommended that firewall functionality be enabled on your router. Most of time, we would like the firewall to control a program or to work through the firewall. Normally, this is automatically done by the program itself. But in some cases, you have to do it manually. You can do this by clicking on allow an app or feature through Windows firewall link. As you can see, for each program or feature of Windows, you can choose to allow incoming connections on the private and public network separately. This separation is handy for things like file and printer sharing and home groups since we don't want someone from the public Wi-Fi to be able to connect to a network share or a local home group. To allow an app, simply find it in the list and then check the box for which type of network you want to allow incoming connections on. If the app is not listed, you can click on the allow another app button and pick up from a list or click the browse button to find your program specifically. If the button is grayed out, click on change settings first. The real power though is if you want to work with the advanced firewall settings. This is obviously not good if you are not sure or are less versed with the system. But it's also not a big deal because you can click the restore, restore default links and set everything back onto the way it was when you were first installed Windows 10. On the left of the Windows firewall window, click advanced settings. The Windows firewall with advanced setting window will open. On the main screen, it gives you a quick overview of your firewall settings for the domain, private networks and public networks. If your computer is not joined to a domain, you don't have to worry about that profile. You can quickly see how inbound and outbound connections are managed by the firewall. By default, all outbound connections are allowed. If you want to block an outbound connection, click on outbound rules in the left hand column. What are the inbound and outbound rules? In order to provide the security you need, the Windows firewall has a standard set of inbound and outbound rules, which are enabled depending upon the location of the network you are connected to. Inbound rules are applied to the traffic that is coming from the network and the internet to your computer or device. Outbound rules apply to the traffic from your computer to the network or the internet. These rules can be configured so that they are specific to computers, users, programs, services, ports or protocols. You can also specify to which type of network adapter, example wireless, cable, virtual private network or user profile it is applied to. In the Windows firewall, with advanced security, you can access all rules and edit their properties. All you have to do is click or tap the appropriate section in the left side panel. In the actions panel of the window, click new rule. The new inbound rule wizard will appear. In the incoming messages from the network internet to the computer. The rules used by the Windows firewall can be enabled or disabled. The ones which are enabled or active are marked with a green checkbox in the name column. The ones that are disabled are marked with a grey checkbox. If you want to know more about a specific rule and, and learn its properties, right click on it and select properties or select it and press properties in the column on the right, which lists the actions that are available for your selection. For example, in the actions panel of the window, click new rule, 
the new inbound rule wizard will appear. On the new rule type page of the wizard, select port, click next. On the protocol and ports page of the wizard, select port. In the specific local ports edit box, enter the needed port. Click next on the action page of the wizard, select allow the connection and click next. On the profile page of the wizard, select the network location for which you want to open a port and click next on the name page of the wizard. In the name field, specify the first rule name and press finish. Similarly, one can do settings on the outbound routes, that is the outgoing messages from the computer to the network or internet. One can see the connection security rules previously made by clicking on the connection security rules on left pane. Connection security rules are used to secure traffic between two computers while it crosses the network. One example would be a rule which defines that the connection between two specific computers must be encrypted. Unlike the inbound or outbound rules, which are applied only to one computer, connection security rules require that both computers have the same rules defined and enabled. If you want to see there are any such rules on your computer, click or tap connection security rules link on the left panel. By default, there are no such rules defined on Windows computers and devices. They are generally used in businesses, business environments, and such rules are set by network administrator. The monitoring and logging can be viewed by clicking monitoring in the left pane. The Windows firewall with advanced security includes some monitoring features as well. In the monitoring section, you can find the following information. The firewall rules that are active both inbound and outbound, the connection security rules that are active whether there are any active security associations. You should note that the monitoring section shows only the active rules for the current network location. If there are rules which get enabled for other network locations, you will not see them in this section. Note that we can modify settings for each type of network location, private or public. Interesting thing here is that we can block all incoming connections, including those in the list of allowed programs. Windows Firewall is actually a Windows service. As you know, services can be stopped and started. If the Windows Firewall service is stopped, the Windows Firewall will not work. The above section discussed on how to set up a firewall on two operating systems like Windows and Mac. Linux have many variants, therefore it has hard to discuss how to configure firewall on Linux. If you have a Linux machine, you are guaranteed a certain level of security by default because of the amazing Linux developer community. Linux systems are generally immune to a majority of viruses and other threats that many other operating systems have. But with the increase in the volume, variety and intensity of cyber threats today, configuring a Linux firewall is quite unnecessary. Every Linux has a default firewall that is IP tables. Using IP tables, administrator can set the rules of the firewall. The Linux kernel has the capacity to filter incoming and outgoing packages with a filtering tool known as IP tables. The IP table tool is in charge of deciding which package packages can come in and go out based on the rules it is configured to follow. IP tables is pre-installed on almost every Linux distribution. You can use this command to retrieve this, the package, that is sudo apt-get install IP tables. How to enable IP tables in Linux? Once configuration is updated, type the following service command at the shell prompt. Hash check config IP tables on is used to start firewall from a shell. To stop a firewall, enter hash service IP tables stop. To restart a firewall, enter hash service IP table restart. IP tables might contain multiple tables and tables might contain multiple chains. 
and chain might contain multiple rules where rules are defined for the incoming and outgoing packets. Therefore, the structure of IP table is IP tables, tables, chains and rules. IP tables has the following five built-in tables. Mostly, we play around with filter, NAT and mangle tables. There are five built-in chains in which we can place our firewall policy rules. We mostly use three chains that are input chains, output chains and forward chains. Chains are a set of rules defined for a particular task. We have three chains which are used to process the traffic. Input chains, any traffic coming from the internet or network towards the, your local machine has to go through the input chains. That means they have to go through all the rules that have been set up for the input chain. Output chains, any traffic going from your local machine to the internet needs to go through the output chains. Forward chain, any traffic which is coming from the external network and going to another network needs to go through the forward chain. It is used when two or more computers are connected and we want to send data between them. To create a new chain, you can use the following command sudo ip tables minus t table name minus n chain name. There are three actions which the ip tables can perform on the traffic. They are accept, drop, reject. Accept. When traffic passes the rules in its specific chain, then the IP table accepts the traffic. That means it opens up the gate and allows the person to go inside the kingdom of your computer. Drop. When the traffic is unable to pass the rules in its specific chain, the IP table blocks that traffic. That means the firewall is closed. Reject. This type of action is similar to the drop action, but it sends a message to the sender of the traffic stating that the data transfer has failed. As a general rule, use reject when you want the other end to know the port is unreachable. Use drop for connections to hosts you don't want people to see. Let us now look at few useful IP table commands. To list the current rules of IP table, you can use sudo ip table minus l apart from l other options can be minus a is used to append one or more rules to the end of the selected chain minus d for specifying a destination minus p protocol for the rule or of the packet to check minus j specifies the target of the rule that is what to do if the packet matches it to add a rule inside a chain of a table you can use the command sudo ip tables minus t table name minus a chain name minus d destination address minus p protocol and minus j action. To flush all the rules use the command sudo ip tables minus t table name minus capital F where minus f is to flush the selected table rules. There are many more commands. One can master these commands as and when required. However, we will stop here looking at the scope of this session. Friends, in this video session, we have learned to define and appreciate firewalls. We saw how various firewalls work in various contexts. We also learned the types and categories of firewalls based on the placement and functionalities. Lastly, we went through to ponder into the firewalls and that are that are available in your system which is nearest to you that is your personal computers i hope you got a sense of the firewalls and you are now better placed to explore it further that ends this session on firewalls thank you and all the best